Hello, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Antoine from uh, Kumbit, um, and this is Stephen from uh, Computer Minds. We're uh, about to make a presentation about Eager. Um, it's an introductory presentation uh, about this project, um, and basically, um, that's it. I can give it up to Stephen. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is just going to be a very sort of high-level overview of Eager. Uh, we're going to then sort of um, sorry, we're going to talk through what, uh, what Eager is and why kind of you've probably come to this session, uh, what it can do for you. Um, we're then going to talk about um, what it's for and what it, um, yeah, what it will actually, the problems it will actually solve in the Drupal space. Um, and we're going to talk briefly about what's new with Ago in the last sort of um, few years, <laughs> maybe sort of in more recent months as well, um, and kind of what, what sort of pain points that you might have heard that Ago has that it are sort of no longer pain points, that sort of thing. Um, Antoine is then going to show you a brilliant live demo that's going to work flawlessly and be and be rather. Rather spiffy, um, and then I'm going to give you some sort of more information of sort of where to go next, and where where you kind of when we've made you go ooh and ah, you can then kind of go somewhere. Uh, and then we're going to sort of try and outline roughly what we think is next for Ager, where where we're going, where we're planning to take it, um, and that sort of thing. So we'll just uh, jump straight into into what Ager is, and Ager is um, well, we kind of describe it as a hosting system for Drupal. Um, it's sort of technically not really the actual hosting system. Um, it kind of manages the hosting system. So the hosting system is still your web servers and your database servers. So it's still Apache, Nginx, MySQL, or Postgres, or whatever. Um, and then Dr uh, sort of Ager manages those components for you. So it sort of takes the hassle out of setting up your vhosts and that sort of thing. Um, oh, wait, wait. Sorry. Did we go the wrong way? Sorry, I have more things to say. Uh, yeah, sorry, Ager is also a, um, sorry, it's, it's equally comfortable managing one site as, say, a thousand sites. So managing hundreds or thousands of sites is not a problem for Ager. Um, we've got 340 sites running on a single server that are all managed by Ager and all get automated upgrades and that sort of thing. Um, that's kind of standard um, stuff. Uh, it can also manage multiple servers, so if you, if you need to have um, isolated uh, hosting, so a particular site lives on a particular server over there and nothing else lives on that server, or you have a particular site that is demanding and can't live with other sites and it needs to be on a better box, then you can spin up a, a server and um, sort of let Ega know about it and then use Ega to move that site onto the server. Uh, and one of the major plus points of Ega is that it actually makes doing upgrades of Drupal much easier, they're much safer. Um, they kind of take the, Ega takes the pain out of doing upgrades of Drupal, it kind of takes the, the sort of tense moment in the office of will this work and will we have to spend the entire afternoon like pulling our hair out while we fix it and our clients get sort of really stressed. Um, you just don't get that and upgrades are like the norm and uh, it just changes the way you do upgrades basically. Um, so what Ager is, is a, uh, a Drupal site and a bunch of Drush scripts. Uh, so if you don't know what Drush is, uh, then Drush is a collection of PHP scripts that kind of uh, you can run from the command line, uh, but they also know about Drupal, so they have an intrinsic knowledge of Drupal so that you can do things like enable modules or uh, reset a user's password or download a module. So it's kind of a Drupal specific um, PHP thing, uh, and it's, it's very ex extendable, so we have extended it to be able to manage servers effectively. It manages web servers and it manages database servers. Um, yep, uh, Ager is a front end and a back end. So this is the, the Drupal and Drush part. So the Drupal part is a site, uh, and the Drupal site is basically there to manage the back end. Um, that's, that's kind of its primary function. And then the back end is there to manage um, manage the servers. And that's the, that's the kind of key concept in, in Ager, that there is this separation between front end and back end. And it's, quite important to understand that. Um, you can, if you want to, just use the back-end stuff, and you don't actually need to use the front-end stuff, but the front-end stuff is quite nice, so there's no reason not to, but if you then want to sort of take it a step further and automate some of the front-end stuff, then you can just talk to the back-end, and the back-end and the front-end kind of talk together and, and that sort of thing. Um, cool. So we've kind of already alluded to, to what Ager's for. Um, mass hosting, if you're hosting one Drupal site, then it's still for you. But if you're hosting 
hundreds of Drupal sites, then it really, really wants to use something like this. It just takes all the pain out of that. Um, but Hager isn't going to make Drupal more performant, so if your servers can't handle a 1,000 sites, then installing Ager isn't going to help your servers handle a 1,000 sites. If you can't handle the traffic, the database, sort of queries and whatnot, then Ager's not going to help with that. Um, it's going to help you manage those sites, but it's not going to make your hosting super fast. So if your servers can handle it, then Ager can handle your servers. Um, as, was as I've already said, uh, it handles upgrades easily. So uh, effectively what it does is it kind of runs update.php for you uses a Drush, um, Drush's implementation of that. Um, uh, but it does it in a way that you can roll back. So um, Ego will take a snapshot of your site uh, before it performs upgrades, and then it will run the upgrade. And if the upgrade succeeds, then everything's fine. And if it doesn't, then it just rolls the site back. Um, and all is well. And someone's waving at me. the benefit of the tape, empty seats are being filled. Uh, so one of the other things that Ager can do, Ager's for, is automated testing. So. Um, <coughs> Ager's really good at managing sites. Um, so if you want to have a continuously integrated site, so say every night your your Drupal site that you get, you're working on, you're developing, gets built, and you can go and see it in the morning and see what, what changes have happened, or your client could go and have a look and see what's happened, then it's really good for automating that sort of thing because because we've done all of the hard work of um, getting Drush to talk to your site and get it to install and that sort of thing. It can also some in some way help with the whole dev staging live workflow. Um, it's not completely solved in Ager because it's not completely solved in Drupal, but um, Ager can certainly help by making it easy to take a copy of your live site and move it over to a different platform, so to a different server or a some some other development server that has different tools so that you can work on it safely away from your, your live site, that sort of thing, but it, it doesn't sort of go any further than that, really. Um, so, yeah, so, so what's sort of new for Ager? Um, so we actually had a stable release. Uh, which is quite exciting, in April. Um, there have been 24 releases of Ager since the 0 0.3 release, which was the last sort of stable version, or they didn't have a kind of 1.0 type stable, but it was a sort of fairly stable base. Um, so we've also had um, uh, a 1.1 and a 1.2 since, and we will shortly have a 1.3. Um, so Ager, devel Ager development is continuing, and kind of there's a steady progress towards new versions, and adding features and fixing bugs and that sort of thing. Um, so we added SSL support. So if you run secure, uh, if you want to run secure sites, uh, who doesn't, then it will manage uh, the keys. Um, it will generate uh, certificate signing requests for you. Um, and it will kind of just take, take most of the pain away from that and kind of set up the right Apache configs, uh, make sure that IP addresses are correct, that sort of thing, um, all automatically for you. Um, we added batch operations, so it used to be a little bit painful to do uh, lots of operations to the same site. So even though I've been saying you can upgrade like a thousand sites in one go, um, it used to be that you had to go and manually kind of do those one by one, unless you wanted to do absolutely all of them. Um, but now we've kind of got a, a views bulk operations type interface, so you can pick a load of sites and perform an action on them, so you can back them up or you can um, upgrade them to a new version of Drupal and that sort of thing. Uh, we also added renaming sites, so you can change the domain name that the site's on, which is quite exciting. Uh, cloning sites, so um, if you've ever wanted to have like a, a complete copy of a existing site that you've got that you can then just mess around with completely and like break and it's completely safe, then we do that and we support that and we kind of use that internally uh, in the Ager sort of framework. Um, we also added remote server support, um, so you can now manage not just one server but lots and lots of servers and yeah so you can tell Ager about different web servers and different database servers and then when you're kind of moving your sites around as we'll, we'll see in the demo well, we won't see this particular bit in the demo but we will see in the demo as you're kind of creating sites um, you just get an option of what server you want to put it on effectively um, and it's just kind of Ager takes care of all of the permissions and linking those servers together in the right way 
So you know that that's the one that sort of helps with the dev staging sort of situation. So you can have your live server in Ago, and you can have a, a staging server in Ago that maybe has um, PH different PHP extensions that help with debugging that sort of thing. And you can just move the site over, and take a clone of the site over. It's exactly the same site, and then you can do things on that other server. Um, and we also added a much much easier install process, uh, which you'll, you will be you will be about to see shortly. Um, yeah, which is kind of a few a few easy commands as opposed to a long sort of script of commands, um, and it, it sort of works pretty well. Um, and we've got an awful lot of documentation now as well. Um, we'll kind of go on in a, a sort of after the demo to talk about where you can get the documentation and where you can go for help and that sort of thing. But um, we've added a lot of documentation and we have a commitment to documenting Aegis so that uh, if you guys want to use it or extend it, then you have that um, as well. Uh, the next bit is the is the live demo. So over to Antoine as he does the live demo. So um, <coughs> there is a long history of failed demos of uh, Eager. Um, <laughs> hopefully, this won't be one of them. Um, this thing works, <laughs> contrarily to. Uh, most uh, presentation I've done about it where I've been pretty um, daring and asking people like tell me what you want to do with this and I try in front of a full room of people and then fail uh, I've actually prepared this one a bit better and um, it, it I hopefully uh, will make it clear that it's actually working <laughs> um, one of the things that that changed since uh, the earlier presentations that we have now a way of installing eager very easily for those of you that have tried to install eager in the past um, this is now much easier so um, that is actually pretty much the biggest I can do um, is that people can see that in the back all right if you can't then I can't do anything for you anyway so <coughs> <laughs> you'll have to deal with it um, so basically this is a vserver that I've provision provisioned at commit uh, that has a uh, well, it's kind of, I'm, I'm cheating a bit here because uh, we, we have installed instructions that when in Debian that you need to configure a special app re repository to get the actual packages because they're not completely in Debian yet and you need to get back ports for Drush. Uh, it's like two commands to do that. And you need to modify your uh, sudo file, which I've already done here. But otherwise, this is pretty much a fresh Debian install uh, with nothing on. Um, and I'm going to get install eager uh, well using the back ports as I said because uh, we need um, the latest versions of Drush which are not in completely in Debian they're just in the back ports so as I said I'm cheating a little like this there is like two steps before that but otherwise this is pretty much all you need to install uh, agar eager <laughs> Um, this used to be much harder. Um, back in the days, it was something that, oh sorry, I'll need to be interrupted to answer various silly questions like setting up my, you know, MySQL server. Um, all those questions are, you know, things that you need to figure out that Eager needs to know to install your server. So what's the URL to the front end? And well, that's fine. Um, it needs to know your MySQL root password. Um, because it needs to create databases and database users, um, but you can, you know, create a spe you like a specific MySQL root user for Eager pr before the install if you need to. Uh, but otherwise, I just you know, give it the MySQL root password, uh, and then it's going to go on installing all the dependencies like Apache, MySQL, and all this stuff. Um, MySQL is actually a recommended dependency; it's not like a hard dependency. You can install the daemon package with a remote MySQL server. If you want, it's kind of a bit of a tweaking to go there, but it's it's doable. You can also uh, you know configure a the front end differently if you want, um, which is kind of an advanced topic. But anyways, uh, so yeah, this before used to be uh, uh, about thirty step process. So now it's much easier. Yes, in the back. So the question is, can you use Postgres in Eager? And the question is, unfortunately, no. Uh, patches are welcome. There's actually uh, people that have started working on a patch for that. And there is two specific 
uh, problems with that. Uh, we need first off front end support, which should be fairly easy, and for which I think there's a patch or a patch waiting or like some a few changes. Maybe it already works to run the front end, like the Drupal site and Postgres. Uh, but the back end support is not there, so we need like ways to create users and all this stuff. This needs to be written. Uh, fortunately, the back end and the front end are very modular, and it's very easy to add new uh, support for new things like Postgres or Nginx and things like that. Um, the only thing that we're missing right now is support for other CMSs than Drupal, but it's something that's been considered, but so, so far nobody has tempted, st actually stepped in to do that work. Um, so yeah, back in 0 0.1, uh, the first official release of Eager, Eager could not do migrations, like upgrades, it could just install one site and one platform. 0 0.2 was actual migration support, so you could have multiple platforms and migrate sites between them. Uh, and 0 0.3, wait, maybe I'm confusing it, but whatever. Back then, installing Eager was, you know, you had to install Drupal and then install Drush and then configure the Drupal site with a magic wizard with that you would click a T your way through that would make you do things and bend over backwards for Eager to work. All this is taken care of for you now. So if you were worried about... Um, eager installing properly as I am right now, <coughs> uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be worried. <laughs> it's going to work. Um, and I'm trying to basically make up for the time it's taking to download all the packages and doing its thing right now. Ah, yes. So yeah, basically for this to work, you need to have Debian or Ubuntu. <laughs> um, Debian packages are kind of hard to install on other operating systems, and I don't recommend trying that. Uh, so we have, of course, support for other operating systems. And so on the community site, um, which is pretty much where all the documentation is, and, you know, um, oops, installing. Um, we have the install guide, which is, you know, we also have a upgrade guide and all this stuff, but the install guide has Instru instructions for the automated install, but also the manual install process, uh, which you can, which has been successfully performed on, uh, of course, Ubuntu and Debian uh, before the Debian package existed, uh, but also Red Hat, uh, CentOS kind of things. Uh, I've made a port to Solaris, and people have actually succeeded, I think, to install this on FreeBSD. Also, is there something I'm missing? By the way. So basically that's the manual install process, which is kind of long and you need to do every step manually. But if you follow that guide step by step and you, do, you don't do anything wrong, Eager is gonna install. And the report back, the report we have from people is saying like, well, you know the Debian package didn't exactly work for me. I started from scratch and read the, inst the manual install instructions like one by one and it just worked flawlessly as always. So basically this is the fallback method you're gonna use in foreign operating systems. If, you, if like somebody wanted to install it in SUSE uh, at the training, uh, well during the training we were planning on doing it with, with Debian. Uh, so I told him, well, you're gonna have to follow the manual install process. And so he set up a Debian VM. But basically <laughs> if, you, if you want to do that, this is the instructions you wanna follow. And this is prompting me for my password again. So it is failing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I swear to God, I've tested this three times yesterday <laughs> on that exact virtual machine, and it worked. And it's not working. Way to go. All right. I'm impressed. <laughs> I can tell you this. Oh, I made a mistake in my MySQL password. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. Okay, we're gonna try again. Password. Pretty <laughs> 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 hell. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we we can see here how to uninstall Eager. <laughs> <laughs> if the install fail, you can just try again. I'm gonna basically completely uninstall um, MySQL and the front end. Uh, the daemon package is made of you know, the back end, which is a Drush extension that's called Provision, um, which you can install standalone if you want. That's kind of useful, but it's hard to use if you're not too familiar with it, but it, it can be useful. Uh, and the front end, uh, that's called Hostmaster, 
and once you install the front end, it's basically using the Dresh script to install itself. So Eager in a way is self-replicating, so it can install itself, um, which is why we sometimes call it Skynet. Um, <laughs> but we try not to tell him that so he doesn't know and take over the world and enslave the human race. So we're going to try this again. And it is uh, this one somewhere. Maybe this one here. Oh. Well, it's not going to work either. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, maybe we can move on with the rest of the demo. Or the the backup demo. <laughs> um so yeah, we kind of expected that to fail, uh, even though I've made uh Herculean efforts to actually make that work. Uh, it's still failing. I'm not worried. Just frustrated because, <laughs> as I said, this is not the first time this happens, and now it fails. You can see why it fails here is because I somehow achieved mistyping the word password twice the same way in configuring the MySQL server just earlier on. So, gotta give it to the man like here, like that was pretty impressive. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this is what I was. I thought I've I've done I've done and server and MySQL common. That's where you're saying it's it's at. All right. Yeah, destroy. We're gonna get there. Otherwise, we have a VM with uh, Eager actually installed already in there, but I feel very frustrated by this. I really want to want it to work. So we're going to actually try to go through with this and make it work because most of it is actually not. Yeah, you know, like back, back in the, I think it was uh, in San Francisco, we made this demo uh, of Eager, and we started with a pre-installed uh, um, eager and just like uh, during the sprint before the that demonstration that presentation um, we had uh, actually w uh, started working on the new installer that would make everything okay now I I'm just shut up and type this right pass word <laughs> Wow. Okay, if this doesn't work, then there's something wrong with the universe. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I was as I was saying in San Francisco, w we were doing the demo and we were very tempted to um demo the new installer we had. There was just this one line drush uh eager install kind of thing that the Debian package actually uses. Uh but we were wise and went with the regular demo and it actually worked. Um so I feel like what I would have felt if I would have tried that new script <laughs> back in San Francisco. But the room was larger, and so it wasn't so bad. Um, I have nothing um, to improvise on right now, so if there's any question, maybe I can answer that. Um, well, one if you have if you want one site, oh sorry, yes. Um, how can I install Django Git magic things other than Drupal? Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, basically, he wants to uh, install another CMS than Drupal using Git, for example, or something like that. And how hard it would be, where would it would we start doing that? Um, there is a site called api.eagerproject.org that documents all the eager internals that I would recommend you read. Uh, right now, there is very tight coupling between eager and Drupal. Green, there's green stuff. Um, Hey, yeah, Eager is, is not installed. Okay, so it would be actually pretty hard to make that work, uh, but it's po I think it's possible. You, you would need to decouple uh, Drupal from the platform concept, uh, and that would require some refactoring and uh, quite a lot of testing, and we would actually welcome such a patch in the next uh, major release, the 2.x release. It's, it's Yeah, but you know it could be a development branch, actually. If you're interested in working on that, we can give, give you commit access, everything. Um, we have actually, yeah, we're going to go back to this, but, uh, it's one of my pet projects, basically that thing, but I've never had time to do it and don't have anybody paying me for it. So when you install eager, what it is giving you when it works <laughs> is that little link, which is just a password reset for the admin user, uh, and then you log in and then you end up in your eager install and then, you know, set your little password. That is not good enough, of course, because it's something else than password. Um, and from there on, this is a regular Drupal site, except that instead of managing like blog content and users, and well, you manage sites and platforms and servers. So one thing we can do right now is to create a new platform. Right now, we already have one platform that's called, actually, I can already create a site on that platform to show you a bit how it works. Um, let's say it's called test one, that eager demo that could be .net. Um, and I'm going to install it on the local host database server on the hostmaster platform, which is the first platform you install. And when you do that, you're going to see in the queue on the right here uh, that it's going to create an install task um, that you repeatedly reload so that you know it's going to run, it's going to run. And basically what's happening in the back end right now is that there is a, a cron job that runs every minute and picks up those tasks. So it's kind of annoying because it, you know, it takes a minute. Uh, we have a fix for that. Um, that's actually a contrib package that Steven wo pro wrote, and that I'm, <laughs> again, going to be bold or stupid enough to try to demo with you <laughs> today. Uh, but before doing that, I'm going to set up a new platform because, you know, just regular Drupal is kind of boring. Um, so we're going to try and install Open Atrium. And I can, I can introduce you to the concept of make files also through that. A make file is uh, just a bunch of instructions, that like a .info file, that tell you, you know, I want um, this module installed on top of my Dru regular Drupal. So you can collect uh, modules from Drupal.org or uh, patches also from Drupal.org. You can apply, apply patches to existing modules and all that. Yep. It's a Drush make file. So there is an extension for Drush that's called Drush make. That's going to do that for you. And we use this in exten extensively in uh, Eager. Uh, you can just put uh, a path to a make file there or even a URL, which is what I'm going to do right now. Um, so, all oh right. So, I'm just spewing out words that you don't understand right now, right? Uh, a platform site, you know, I've used those words interchangeably basically. Uh, for Eager, a platform is one multi-site Drupal. A is anybody not familiar with the multi-site Drupal, what a multi-site Drupal is here? So yeah, well anyways, Drupal can have multi-sites for y Drupal instance, right? Y when you untar a Drupal site, you have sites default, but you can create multiple sites in there. And you Eager uses that concept extensively. So y when you have a site, it's actually one instance of a platform, of a, of, of a, of a um, Drupal core. Uh, deployment, code deployment. So now when I install a site here, it's my test one site, it's on the ho like the, the default Drupal platform that comes with Eager, that's called Hostmaster. Uh, and that platform has a specific set of packages um, that create this nice little interface, like the theme, the modules you see right now. Um, and Eager actually has that list uh, in it, so it can, it knows if you can migrate between two platforms, like do an upgrade, it can see if the platforms are compatible by listing the packages in that platform. Is that clear enough for everybody? 
because I kind of jumped in straight away into platforms. Um, so yeah, now we didn't, like I was talking so much that we didn't notice we were waiting for that thing to happen, but um, basically one of the annoying things with Eager is that you, you know, need to wait like that. So there's a little fix for that, um, which will allow you allow me to also demonstrate some useful features of Drush and Eager, if you have not been familiar with those. Uh, so Eager maintains your Drush aliases for you. Uh, a Drush alias is just a shortcut to um, access easily, more easily a site. Usually, you know, to run commands uh, on, a, on the Drupal site through Drush, I would need to go and actually be in the, in, in the right directory <laughs> uh, and then do Drush commands from there. So sites and then eager, you know, that's kind of annoying. I, do, I, I, I can, you know, flush the cache with Drush, for example. Um, and you know that doesn't work. <laughs> um, but instead of doing that, I can just use the alias. Um, so yeah, we need to like commands won't work unless you are the eager user. So we need to do that. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, that's why it wasn't working. So the aliases allow you to um, like, you know, access the site regardless of where you are. So in the same way, I can download new modules uh, into my Drupal site with Drush download. Um, and that one module we want to install is the QRunner, which is a daemon that's going to run our tasks faster because we don't want to wait for that. Uh, so I can just download the module like that and enable it with Drush. And from there on, I can run the queue runner itself here which is then waiting for new tasks okay so instead of having this cron job that's going to pull the queue every minute now this is running the task as quickly as it can get so we're going to install the open atrium site uh, and the tradition in eager demos is to ask <laughs> um, while we create the site um, which language you want open atrium in <laughs> Um, so, Swahili? Did I hear Swahili? So let's see if we have Swahili in there. Oh, we do. So um, last time we tried with Catalan and it failed. <laughs> so let's see if it works with Swahili. Um, so you see the task is waiting now, it's blue. If I just reload. Now the daemon's gonna pick it up immediately instead of having to wait that minute. And now it's processing. Um, every task has a task log so you can see exactly what's going on. For example, when I created the Open Atrium platform, it created me this task log that says, okay, I'm gonna bootstrap Drupal. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna fetch that make file here. Okay, I'm gonna install it with make, with Drush make, then download all those modules here and untar them in the right places. So the task log allows you to see exactly what's going on when you ask something from Eager. It's it's also the way the, the back end, the Drush commands, provide feedback to the front end so you see what's going on. Um, so yeah, it's installing. <laughs> and hopefully that's gonna work. Um, one of the cool things you have, oh, finished. There you go. So. So when the install is actually finished and succeeded, <laughs> because we're lucky, or because you know it's a demo that actually works for a change, um, you have a login link that appears in your site uh, node in the, in the front end, which you can just click on. And that's going to bring you to the site, if everything goes well. Yeah. And then we're in uh, Open Atrium that's obviously in Swahili right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's some little piece of Swahili there. I guess we're not very well translated, but there you go. So that's an open atrium installed in about 10 seconds or 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what it Eager does for you. It makes things easier, except when you're in front of an audience of 100 people. Um, but you know, when you're in the, your office, it kind of works really, really well. You don't have that much pressure, and you can do things more slowly <laughs> if you want. You're not in a rush. Um, 
don't know how much we have to cover more. Uh, maybe we can, there's more stuff we can demo with this. We can do like upgrade, uh, like I install the Drupal 6 sites. We can upgrade it to Drupal 7 if you want. Uh, otherwise we have maybe more slides we want to show. Maybe I can do this in the end. Okay, so I can do a, a Drupal 7 upgrade. Yeah. Who wants to see that? Drupal 7. Yeah, okay. And everybody upgraded their site to Drupal 7 already, so this is like, you don't need that, right? I can upgrade to Drupal 8, maybe? Nah, <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> okay, so let's... The so the, the way we do upgrades uh, in Eager is that we stage the upgrades. That is, we create a separate platform, like a separate code base, and we back up your site, and then we migrate it to that platform. So what I'm, what I'm going to do first is to create a new platform for um, Drupal 7. So, um, you know, I've used Drush Make before. Now I don't have a make file for Drupal 7. So I'm just going to, you know, download Drush, uh, Drupal 7 with Drush um, here. And um, we put those platforms in, you know, the platform directory to make things simpler. Uh, to download Dr Drupal, you can just use just use Drush download, which is something I've learned during the training, even though I was giving that training. <laughs> you learn things every day. Um, and then, you know, I have a Drupal 7 site here. Uh, well, not site, but platform, a code base, in which I can install a site. But before I do that, I need to tell Eager where my Drupal 7 is. So I tell it here, platforms, Drupal 7.7. It is dash seven, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually we have uh, red things here in demos because something fails, and so far I haven't been able to do that except during the install. So maybe you know it's going to happen at some point. I can show you how to debug that, but you know, we're going to have um, we're going to have uh, well, there you go. It's already done. So what Verify does, it's going to look at the at the platform, it's going to detect, oh, it's a Drupal 7. You know, it's going to find all the packages that are in there. And when you take your, the test site I created earlier, I can do a migrate task if I enable the migrate module. <laughs> right. So this is um, one part that's kind of important in Eager, the features page, which is not feature features, it's eager feature, it's kind of confusing, uh, but it's kind of an easy module page we made for people to just activate and deactivate eager features. So site migration, for some reason, is not enabled by default, even though like, it's one of the use most useful feature. We're thinking of maybe fixing that in the 1.3 release, but um, you know, to just add some stress in demos, it's not turned on yet. Uh, so when you go into the, um, the site, you have a new task that's called migrate, and then when you do that, it pops up the list of platforms you can migrate it to. So I could migrate my site to OpenAtrium. That's not going to do much. It's, it's still going to be a Drupal site, just an OpenAtrium platform. And then I could like enable OpenAtrium modules. But the interesting thing here is migrating to Drupal 7. You can see that it's going to do 31 upgrades. And there's one warning. We can actually see what those things are by doing the compare platforms. Um, and this shows what, the, what modules are in the current platform and what modules are in the next platform. So for example, it's going to update the block module to 6.22 to 7.7, and you get the database uh, version number there. The warning we had was the missing default module. The default module is the default install profile, which changed name in Drupal 7. So this doesn't matter, because missing modules, Drupal can kind of deal with them. It just disables them, and it works, on, it works through. Uh, this could be a problem if you migrate between two platforms and say your theme isn't there and disables your theme. That can be kind of hard, like annoying, uh, which is why we have clones. <laughs> you clone your site and then it disables your theme, say, hmm, maybe I need to fix that first. And then you fix your stuff and then you try to clone again, you rinse, repeat, and until, uh, until it actually works and you can do a final migrate. So now I've launched the migrate tasks. What this is doing, it's backing up my current site it's putting it offline because it's doing migrate and we don't want people uh, you know, putting more content and modifying the site that could be lost. So it's doing this backup. It's gonna restore it on the target platform, run uh, drush update db, which is the command line version of update.php. And then if that all works, it's gonna tear down the uh, original site and activate the new site. 
So if something fails along the way, uh, like the update DB doesn't work or something is wrong with the target platform, the code doesn't compile or something, uh, it's going to fail and it's going to roll back. So it's going to just reactivate the old site that's still there and tear down the, the restored backup. So the question is, if you have a huge set of CCK fields, does that really work to migrate to Drupal 7? The honest answer for me is I have no idea. Uh, I uh, don't exactly know what the upgrade path is for CCK to Drupal 7. If it works outside of Eager, it's going to work in Eager. That's the short answer. Uh, the long answer is that Eager is going to actually help you figure that out. If you create that Drupal 7 platform and, and like add all the modules that you think are going to be necessary to that migration and then you clone your site. You can test. You're going you're gonna to have a copy of your site that's maybe broken. Maybe the, the clone won't even work. But at least your, your site will still be running on the site. And so you'll be able to test that repeatedly un until you fix the upgrade path, right? Hopefully. <laughs> well, not hopefully. You have to fix the upgrade path, right? <laughs> so, but or stay with Drupal 6, but at least you have a space to test that without breaking your site too much. And it makes it very, very easy. Um, yep. Um, the question is, what are the options for security? Uh, for the server, uh, like uh, Apache uh, s uh, SSL certificates or uh, the HT password kind of things. Um, right now, there is uh, the idea is that Eager is extensible. So you can write modules the same way you write modules for Drupal. Since it's all Drupal and Drush, you're used to extending that, right? So you can you know modify that site form to add uh, a HT password, user and, u user and password fields that are going to be write, written in the back end. This is actually uh, something that Steven did, that, so that much already exists. Um, All right. OK, so the question is, does he Yeah. Does Eager need uh, secure access to the remote server it's managing? And the answer is yes. Uh, the way That's it actually the way it works. So the way eager communicates with remote servers is through SSH. So you need to create a user on the remote server and then add eager's SSH keys to the authorized keys and then it's going to push files and do remote commands to that SSH uh, pipe. Yeah, eager, the eager user is going to need, basically it, it's going to run sudo apache ctl graceful to reload the, the apache server and it's going to create files in the apache configuration. So so there's there's one virtual host per site, right? So when you create like a site like test one that eager demo that commit that net that creates created a virtual host in the Apache configuration. So eager needs to be able to do that. And uh, yeah, yes. Yes. So the way I created the Drupal seven platform was to just drush download Drupal seven, and then I added that as a platform. You could do that like adding an existing code base as a platform on an existing site. And Eager is going to see that there is sites in there. It's going to import them in the front end. And from there, you can migrate them, clone them, and do like backups and restore and all the usual stuff you can do with Eager. Um, there is currently no Git integration in core of eager uh, we have made our stuff mostly uh, through um, uh, to make file we support mostly make files but the it sh it would be fairly easy to write drush hooks that would run before or after an upgrade and things like that that you can even create a task that would be like git pull and there's actually I, th I think an issue open for that that people want just to are working on creating a task that says like git pull on that site or git pull on that s on that platform um, the thing you need to understand when you run multiple sites is that if you change the code under the like in those sites back, it can break stuff. 
which is why we stage upgrade. We create a separate platform on the side and we migrate sites one by one, or we can do batch migration, um, but we don't change the code behind the sites back. We copy the site over and then run update.php. Because if you change the code, maybe somebody's gonna visit the site and run the code with the wrong database version and then it's gonna you know, break the site. So we don't do in-place upgrades or in-place modifications to code, but you're free to do that. And one of the big ideals in Eager is to create tools and not policy. So if you want to have a you know, danger zone policy and create funky stuff and do in-place upgrade, you're free to do that, but out of the box, that's not the way things are. So this apparently worked. It looks like it. Uh, so we're gonna see if that is true. Um, uh, so basically, this is useless. I'm gonna visit the site, and well, this is a regular Drupal. It seems like a regular Drupal with Garland and everything, but actually, since it's Garland, it didn't change the theme because you were, you know, you wanted Garland, you still have Garland, and it's running Drupal 7. How can I actually show that to you? Yeah, I need do a password reset because I didn't change, you know, I didn't log in the first time around. So I'm gonna need to use Eager to do a password reset, which is unfortunate. I should have done earlier, uh, that earlier, but it allows me to show you that you can, if you forget a password on any of your site in Eager, you can just click that single button and that's gonna turn that go to link into a login link. Just very useful. There we go. What's that? Oh yeah, that is new in 1.0. And yeah, like, you know, account time zone settings, things like that, That's that looks like Drupal 7. We don't have the overlay, so, you know, maybe some people are actually gonna want to install Drupal 6 and migrate to Drupal 7. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a Drupal 7 site. How's that for you? Good, no, useless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any uh, more questions about this demo? Things you're curious about it? Oh, dear experimental. Oh, yes. I was trying to hide that from you. <laughs> nah, we don't hide anything. We do like crazy demos all the time that fail, so I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, so yeah, what do we have here? Those are disabled. There's web cluster support. That's also exper It should be an experimental. It's right there. Uh, cron queue is not enabled by default, but that runs cron on all of your site. Uh, we have a sign up form that when you enable that, it allows any user to create a site on your eager, which if you want to provide um, public free hosting, that's cool. But if you want to start doing like things like integration with Ubercart, this is where you start. Uh, or this is actually how the Ubercart integration works. It use reuses site form, uh, the site sign up form. But if you would want, for example, to use the commerce module instead of Ubercart, you would start from that. And ex experimental, you have SSL support, Nginx, uh, support for DNS, the hosting QRunner is hidden down there. And um, support for clients. So client support is that you can have uh, groups of users uh, to which sites are assigned. Out of the box, uh, sites are accessible for everybody, for every user uh, on the Eager server. When you check that box, you can associate a site with a client, which is just a node, a little bit like the way uh, organic groups works. Um, so does that answer your question? Which was, what are the experimental features? Over there, there was a question. It is all eager. Uh, I mean, everything, the question is uh, how secure is remote access to the remote servers? Um, nothing in eager runs as root. The only, the only time we run stuff as root is through sudo, and we do sudo apache ctl graceful. That's the only thing eager currently runs as root. And it's the same thing on remote servers. You just create a regular user that's called eager, you give him the SSH keys, you give him sudo access so he can restart Apache, and that's all you need. On the MySQL side, it's kind of different. You actually need to have a, a MySQL root account that can do pretty much everything, like create users, create databases, but you can still try to lock it down a, li a little. Um, but usually, you, you pretty much dedicate the MySQL server to Eager when you install it. 
Does that answer your question? It, it has root access. Yeah. Okay. Any other question before we move on? Yes? Uh, there is no comments right now on tasks, but you could extend the sites, uh, the tasks node, because the task is a node. You can extend it to do that. Um, right now, there is no comment, I think, for clones. Oh, so you copy just the comments or something like that? Oh, yeah. Not really. <laughs> Again, the, the, the idea is that those, this is the, the framework you start with. You can do whatever you want from there on. You could like make a post migrate hook that's going to trim your databases or stuff like that. There's an issue in the queue right now saying like we don't want to migrate the cache tables, for example. And so we gr we're going to work on making an extension that does that. Um, but basically, Drush and Drupal are very extensible. You can hook on things uh, in the back end. Every Drush command can have a pre and validate and post hooks. You have rollbacks if things fail. Uh, you can extend that uh, just as you would in any regular Drupal module. So you, you need to get your hands dirty and like start coding, but you can do anything you want in there. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go on with the last slides and we can maybe come back with questions in the end if there's any. So um, now that you've kind of gone, ooh, uh, um, we can kind of, you know, other than asking us questions, um, sort of how, how do you get help? Um, as Antoine's already sort of alluded to, uh, community.agaproject.org is the main sort of focus for where we do um, Aga stuff and where we have documentation and where we have uh, blog posts and we kind of aggregate uh, other people's blogs who blog about Aga onto the site. Um, so it's kind of a one-stop place for sort of everything Aga. Um, uh, we... Excuse me. Uh, we hang out in uh, the hash Aga, or pound Aga, if you prefer that way, uh, chat room on Freenode. Um, you're more than welcome to come along and ask questions and that sort of thing. Generally, there's people who are willing to, to answer questions or sort of fix your servers if you've broken them, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of where we do sort of development chats and that sort of thing. Uh, we have weekly scrums, so uh, as a sort of the core development team of Aga and sort of anyone who sort of contributes to Aga can, can get together every week and uh, talk about what we're doing, what we've done, that sort of thing, and kind of keep moving the project on. And uh, if you just kind of want to get a feel for what the Ega project's doing, then just kind of watching that scrum happen and finding out what's going on is really good. If you kind of are sort of thinking, oh, I really want to contribute the don't migrate comment stuff, then kind of see what's going on in the scrum to get a feel for sort of how you how you contribute to Ega, and maybe that's kind of where you start. Uh, and obviously the issue queues. Uh, on which are on Drupal.org, so um, all our projects are hosted on Drupal.org, um, and that's sort of where all the, the major discussions happen. Um, but there's a link from, from the community site on the homepage, there's a little box on the left-hand side that has a search box so you can search all of our issue queues because AGA is actually comprised of multiple projects on Drupal.org, uh, and there's a link to kind of view all the issues for all the projects and that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of where you can get more information really f about AGA. Um so just very quickly, what's what's next for Ega? What you can kind of expect. Um, so uh, the, the primary kind of thing that we're we're after is a, uh, a Drupal seven a Drupal seven front end. So as you saw, we support uh, sort of hosting Drupal seven sites and managing Drupal seven sites, and that's that's not a problem. But our actual front end is in Drupal six. We just want to move to Drupal seven, um, and then take advantage of Drupal seven at some point, and that's kind of our, our sort of major thing that we want to do uh, first of all. We also want to add uh, additional points that people can plug into and people can extend Aga with um, and that sort of thing um, and sort of give you guys sort of more power to, to do things and that sort of thing. Uh, we also essentially want to do WordPress stuff um, or other CMSs, patches are welcome. Um, I'm not massively interested in that, but I have nothing against supporting WordPress, so if someone wants to post a patch, we'll review it, um, no problem. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much up, um, it from us. Uh, I'll just mention briefly. 
uh, I was told to let you know that you should go and uh, take the survey um, and sort of rate our session and that, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, thank you for, for coming. Um, we'll end with questions. So the question was, do you know anyone using Ego commercially not on uh, Debian or Ubuntu? Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 Sorry? Um, well, it's just, it's just managing Apache and MySQL. So uh, as long as Apache and MySQL can work on your um, operating system uh, and Ego can sort of interact with that, then it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, if your server can run Drupal and Drush, then it can run Ego because that's, that's what it is. Um, there's no, there really isn't anything special. Um, Anton mentioned that the only the only command that we need root access for is the Apache one, but that's just a text field that you can change. So if if it needs to be a different command, then you just change it. For if you need to have a different command for your different platform, then you can just change it and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? So the question was uh, kind of coming from the angle of dev staging live and then sort of um, uh, the Acrea uh, dev cloud and I guess you can include Pantheon in that kind of circle of those sort of services and, and how, how do they fit in with, with Ego and how does Ego kind of relate to those and that sort of thing. Um, I'm, I think the honest answer is we're not really sure how they fit together. Um, from my point of view, Ego is much more about um, kind of I want to do the hosting but I don't want to have to actually manage all of my hosting sort of the, the nitty gritty of it. Um, if you want to pay someone to do it all for you, then go and use one of those software as a service type things. But if you want to maintain control over the hosting and kind of all of the issues associated with that, then Ego is, is sort of for you and it will, will manage that. Um, I, don't know if I guess another way to put it is if you want to run your own Acquia dev cloud, Ego is going to do it. Um, it's 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 software, right? So it's not an actual service. Uh, Kumbit is going to provide services like that, and other like people using Eager are providing services like that. And one of the um, featured software as a service platforms that was on Drupal.org and is still maybe maybe still there was uh, was deployed using Eager. So people are going to use this. It's open source, right? It's free software. Anybody can use and deploy Eager. Whereas, well, Acquia, the backend they use is not uh, currently public, as far as I know. So. That's that's the main difference, I would say. Uh, any issues with Varnish? Uh, there is one issue when you run Varnish on the same server as you run Eager. There's d they use different ports, so the password reset links and things like that are not working very well. And somebody's working on a cluster module that's gonna ex actually going to fix that. Uh, but we currently use uh, Varnish with Eager in production, where we just have this. Varnish server that points to Eager as a backend, and when we want to put somebody in Varnish, we just change the DNS records to point to Varnish, and that's it. So there's absolutely no issue there. We deploy uh, Pressflow by default with uh, Eager, which also makes the whole integration much uh, easier. If there are sites outside of Eager, is it easy to uh, integrate them into Eager, migrate them into Eager? The answer is yes. Uh, if they are already on the same server, you just do add platform and point, uh, the, uh, point the platform path to those sites, and Eager is going to import them automatically in, in your Eager instance. If they're outside, it's a bit trickier. You need to copy files around and things like that, but we have instructions on, on doing that, on how to do that in the, in the community site. So. Yeah, it's fairly easy. It's actually designed for that. Yeah. Um, um, current uh, support for load balancing and cluster is kind of um, uh, preliminary. It's not very mature. Uh, we're looking into uh, making that work. But there is some support to, for example, deploy 
a platform to multiple servers. So you're going to have a cluster server, a web, a web server that's going to collect multiple web servers. So you're going to deploy a platform to that cluster. It's actually going to copy the files to all of those servers. And when it's going to create the site, it's going to create the site on all those servers. And all those servers are going to be autonomously running the same code, uh, which is pretty interesting from a redundancy point of view, but it's actually fairly heavy because you need to copy files all around all the time. Um, and there are some issues with the implementation. But that's the current approach. Uh, the approach Kumbit has had in the past was to have a shared file system, uh, and that is not currently covered by Eager, but it's something we're looking into. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what the current cluster code is doing. We use rsync to copy files over. Is there any? We're pretty much done here. So if there is no other question, uh, well, if there is any other question, uh, you can join us outside or in front here. And there is a birds of a feather session about eager development this afternoon, and another uh, boss session tomorrow. Finally, there's a code sprint on Friday. So if people want to join us again, look at the boss schedule. Thank you very much.